morning, Rabbi. Good morning. Okay, ready? We're gonna start the um we're gonna start the uh chitas of the day. We're ready. Ready as can be. Okay, good morning, everybody. As we start the uh Chumash in the, in the day, today we start a portion of uh Achli Mois. And uh today this week again is a double portion, Achli Mois and Kudoshi. Um, this week's portion is about the uh, Yom Kippur service and whatever was done on Yom Kippur in the Beis Hamikdash. And that's the uh, Achir Mois. We read this every Yom Kippur. We read actually the beginning of the portion in on the morning and the end of the portion on the Mincha service of Yom Kippur. We are in Leviticus chapter 16, verse number one. Idab Hashem Mesha, and God spoke to Mesha. After the death of the two sons of Aaron, the Kravasim of Hashem, when they became close to God, by Yamusu, and they died. So now she said, This is about Yom Kippur. What is the meaning after the death of the two sons of Aaron? So Rashi gives an analogy to Gemara. Abelazim and Isaiah gave an illustration of a person that goes to a doctor. And the doctor tells him, Don't eat. Cold food. Don't uh, do not uh, lie down in the cold. And then another another patient comes to him, and he tells him, um, um, uh, he tells him the same thing, but he doesn't. He, he tells him, Don't die like the other person died. Do not eat cold food. Do not eat that. So you will not die like so and so died. So, so too, God says to the sons, to, to Moshe, to tell Aaron that going into the Holy of Holies, which is what something that his sons did, um, is something that you should not do, and only on a, on a certain day, but in regular times, you should not do it because you do not want to die like another person died. Verse number two, Yem Hashem Moshe got to Moshe Dabalad and speak to Aaron Achicha to your brother. Va'yovim echol Esal Hakodesh. He's not allowed to come all times to the holy. Over here it means the holy of holies, where the ark was. He based lachab abreches within the dividing curtains, because in the temple itself there was a place. The temple divided into two parts. The bigger part was where the menorah was. And the table of showbreads and the incense altar. And then there was a curtain that divided the back part. And that was with the Holy of Holies, was called the Kodesh Kadoshim, the Holy of Holies. Over here, you're going to see the words Kodesh and uh, Holy. And uh, this place was where the ark was. And you were not allowed to go into that. Nobody went into that place. Never, unless on Yom Kippur. That was the only day. They went into the whole, the Koyu went into the Holy of Holies. And this was in the first temple, in the second temple. That means whether the Ark was there in the first temple, the second temple, whether the Ark was not there. Well, you and he will not die. Because I appear over the Ark in a cloud. <clears throat> so now she says, I'm going to the, 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 pick out the Ashik, in a cloud I appear. Rashi says the meaning is because I continuously appear there in my pillar of cloud. And therefore, since my divine presence is revealed there, he must care, be careful not to accustom himself to enter. This is a simple meaning. Our rabbis interpret it as follows. He shall not come except with the cloud. That means the, that we're comparing the uh, incense also, the incense which the Koyim brings he brings in on Yom Kippur. He walks in with a pan and, and on it, ketoret, incense. And he made a cloud go up. He put fire on it. And a cloud went up of, uh, of smoke. And that's the only time he's allowed into the Holy of Holies. So there's two ways to interpret Kiba Anon, because God reveals with a cloud, or the Koyin is only allowed to go in with a, so to say, cloud. 
Verse number three. So I've allocated you only in this way Aaron could come into the holy. The Pad ben Bakr. This is a the 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 what we're gonna learn today is the service of Yom Kippur, the very short version of the service. There's a whole tractate of Yuma on this uh, Pasha, which you should learn about how the service of the Koyin Gadol, which that was the main service of the Koyin Gadol, the day of Yom Kippur, which he did, it was a whole day service and it was a very intense and a very specific kind of a service. But we're going to, we, we, it's in this week's portion and of self understood a very condensed way. So the first thing he needs to bring is a bull sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And Ashi says, Bizois is an interesting Ashi. Ashi usually doesn't give gematrias. But here Ashi gives us a gematria, Bizois. If you take the word Bizois, it equals up to 410. Bizois. And that eludes, Ashi says, to the first temple that stood for a four. 110 years. And why specifically the first temple? Because that was the when the Arain was in the Beis Amigdash. The first temple was when the first 410 years of the existence of the temple on the Temple Mount was when the Arain was in the temple. That's the first 410 years. Then the Beis Amigdash was destroyed. 70 years later, it was built again and stood for 420 years. But there was no Arain in the Holy of Holies. The Zeus Yahweh Aaron, even with this, not all times, but only Aaron Kippur, as you said at the end of the section, the seventh month and the tenth day, which is Yom Kippur, Tishrei, on the tenth day of the month of Tishrei. Then it says, verse number four, B'Kseyn is Bat Kodesh Yilbash, he shall wear Oh, the regular time, a Koyin Gadol wears eight garments. Remember, we learned that before. That a Koyin Gadol, the difference between a Koyin Gadol, a, a high priest, and a Koyin headed, a simple priest, was a Koyin Gadol, when he did the service, he wore eight garments. And the extra four garments were made from gold, in wine gold, etc. But when he went into the service of the Beis Amikdash and the Anyam Kippur, he would change into linen garments. He went into the Holy of Holies, he would change into linen garments. And this took a couple of times, and as Rashi is going to say, that the Koyan God will change his clothes from gold to linen to gold to linen to gold. Four times he changed his clothes back and forth as he did the service of the day. And every time he changed his clothes, he went to the mikvah. That means that on the day of Yom Kippur, he went five times, the Koyin God went five times, went in the morning, put on his gold, took off his gold, went to the mikveh, put on his linen, took off his linen, went to the mikveh, put on the gold, took off the gold, went to the mikveh, put on the linen, took off the linen, went to the mikveh, put on the gold. And he went five times to the mikveh, changed his clothes four times. Because there was, this, there was a service of the outside, and there was a, which in the Gemara, so the service of the outside and the service of the inside. So the service of the inside, meaning in the temple, and, the whole, and especially the Holy of Holies, he needed to wear a simple white garment like a regular Koyan simple. That's interesting. That's a separate law. So, by enumerating only four garments, of an ordinary Kayin scripture informs us that the Kayin God does not perform the service inside, which inside means the Holy of Holies, wearing the eight garments which he performed the service outside the Holy of Holies. For those garments contain gold, and a prosecutor cannot become a defender. Meaning, since the Kayin God ends the Holy of Holies on Kippur affects atonement for Israel, he may not, he not, not wear in gold, gold, in gold is reminiscent of the golden calf. And therefore, when he went into the Holy of Holies, he needed to take off his gold garments and put on simple white garments, four garments of a regular body. Look at that, Rashi. Rashi says, on the day he was required to immerse himself every time he changed his garments. 
And in total, the Kayin Gadol changed his garments five times when he transformed from the service inside to the Holy of Holies and the service outside and from the outside to the inside, changing from the golden garments to the white garments. And ultimately, at the end, he changed his regular garments again. That's we have five times. And the white garments, are the, and, and every change of garment, he was required to immerse in the mikvah once and to sanctify his hands and feet twice. So he went to the mikvah five times. And he washed his hands and his feet ten times by washing his hands in the water in water and, and from the waist from the wash stand. Once when he removing the garment he wore, and the second time when he put on the garment. So every time he went to the mikvah, every time he went to the mikvah, he actually washed his hands and his feet twice. So that's why you have five times going to the mikvah on Yom Kippur, and ten times washing his hands and feet in the wash. And I, so this was a very, very intense day for the Kayan Gadol. His service, it was a very, very, as you'll soon see, a very concise service. And he needed to know exactly that it was actually a seven day preparation with the Kayan Gadol and his Kayhanim would go through the service day by day, practice to make sure that the service of Kippur went without a hinge. And it would go and it would be a perfect service and everything would be perfectly done. Verse five. And then from the children for the community of Israel, he has to take two goats. Two goats as a sin offering, the Ayel Echad, and one ram as a burnt offering. Verse number six. These are the this there's two portions of, of the of the uh, of the um service of Yom Kippur. One is in this week's Pasha, Achri most, and one is in numbers later on. And, and they are, the difference in between them, and therefore the Gemara, you have to learn the Talmud to know exactly how the service went, because we have a little bit of difference between the book of Leviticus and the book of Numbers, and the Gemara brings these two Pashas together to explain exactly how the service went. Aaron brings his sin offering of a bull offering, his personal sin offering. And he brings atonement to himself and will be at and for the family of Kohanim. So he has to bring, a, it's an essence on the day of Yom Kippur. Aaron, the high priest, needs to bring a forgiveness to himself, forgiveness to the, to the, to, to the, to the family of Kohanim, and ultimately a forgiveness to the Jewish nation. Verse number seven. And then he takes these two goats and he puts them, stands them before God. That was in the standing, it was in the, uh, I have a picture of these plastic. <laughs> so he So these are the two goats he took and he made what we're going to call a girdle. See the box over there? In that box there were two, two, uh, two tablets. One said, La Hashem to God. And one said, La Zazel need to go to this mountain. La Zazel. So, but not And Adam places a lot upon the two he goats. One lot for the Lord, who was brought up as sacrifice, and one lot for Azazel. Azazel was a very was a high mountain with a very rocky high mountain. This is a Xedus Akasa, which God wanted Ayim Kippur. The animal should be thrown off them. Though that's the uh, that's what he did. Verse number nine. And Adam will bring that he goat, which the lot, which he took a lottery, and it, and it came up for God. But also Chata said he's going to bring it as a sin offering. Verse number ten. And the he goat which came up. The lot which says Azazel Yamad Chai has to stand still alive, the Papa love to bring forgiveness, La Shalach Ose La Zazel to send it away to Azazel into the desert. So that was the second, that was the two he goats that he had. Verse 11. He came out as Parachata Shashalay and I don't bring the sin offering. The bull offering that he has, he brings forgiveness for him and his household. And he, and he, he slaughters the sin offering, the bull, 
that is it. This is very intricate. The Torah keeps on going back and forth. And that's why it's, you have to know exactly the setup. There was, a, there was many offerings that were brought here, as I said, one for himself, one for the family of Kehadim, and one for the Jewish nation, which brought about different offerings that were brought. But Achenachi said, the second confession, and this is actually, if you come to Yenshul, Yom Kippur, it's called the Avoida, in part of the service, in the Musaf service of Yom Kippur service, it's called the Avoida, which we go through the entire service of the Kehane, of the Kohen Gadol and what they said, and all his confessions that he said, we mentioned it in the service of Yom Kippur, every Yom Kippur we, made, we, we go through the service and our prayers of the Musaf service. Uh, this was the main, this was the main, verse number 12 was the main service of the day. And then he takes a pan of coals from the Mizbeh and from the Lord. And he fills, he fills his hands with, with uh, Ketoidus, incense. And he brings it into the Holy of Holies. And that's why I wanted to show you a picture so you get a, get a picture of what that meant. To bring it into the Holy of Holies. This was done, as I said, once a year. It was done. The Kayan brought, I see that pan. There was two pans. One was the coal and one was the incense. And he would put the incense, which was the, that silver pan, he would put it into, put it on a pan of coals in the Holy of Holies where the other was, as you see, and a, a pillar of smoke would go up. And he didn't leave that room until it was totally smoked out that room. And that's the main service of the Koya Gadol. And we know that the Koya Gadol going into the Holy of Holies was extremely a dangerous situation. Verse number 13. When Nasrach Teres Allah has placed the incense upon the fire, the Hashem before God, the Chisa Nan HaKeteres HaKapetes, so the cloud of incense shall envelop the ark and cover it, that cover the, ta the, the, the tablets of testimony. Actually, uh, uh, so it has to, it had to be done there. It was exact amount of potatoes and everything had to work out well that a smoke should go up. This was a very, and imagine the Koyan Gadol going into the Holy Bowl, he's very nervous. He had to make sure that he did this right and that the smoke should go up. And I said, that's why they would pair the Kohen God those seven days in advance to make sure that he did this exactly the way it should be. Then he leaves. Verse number 14. He blows out. He takes the bull, the blood of the bull. He already sacrificed the blood. He already shechted it, slaughtered it. He takes the blood. He has to sprinkle it towards the towards the carpetus, towards the, 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 the curtain. That cover the holy of holies, that separate the holy of holies from the holy. He sprinkled it seven times, Adam seven times with his finger towards that curtain. And that was that's what Rash says, Shevalamaila seven times above, the Shevalamata seven times below. And that's why on Kip you'll see Achas, the Achas, they would say one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four. For the whole service in, in on Yom Kippur we mentioned. Verse 15. Then he brings the he goat that was for the nation. And he has to bring the blood. He has to bring the blood in front of the curtain. And he has to sprinkle the blood of, this, of the sin offering of the people, the Jewish nation. And he did the same thing but he did for his own Will per his personal sacrifice. He sprinkled the blood seven times in front of the parishes, in front of the curtain. Verse 16. And he shall effect atonement upon the holy for the defilement of the Jew, children of Israel. And from their rebellion, to all their unintentional sins. And so he's likewise due to the tent of meaning, who dwells within their midst, 
in their impurity. So yes, this brings about a, a, a forgiveness, as she says, on all the impurities that the Jewish people are, are, are impure and they're doing things in the in in the in in the while they're impure, not even not knowing. We're talking unintentionally. So it brings a young kipper brings about atonement for all unintentional sins that the Jews might have done throughout the year. Verse 17. No man, not even a kohen, is allowed into the tent of meeting when he comes to affect the atonement of the holy. Not say so until he goes out. The chipe ba'adoya ba'abese shall bring atonement to himself and his household. Uba'at kol kahal Yisrael in the kohen gadol brings about atonement for him, for his family, and for the entire Jewish nation. That's one of the reasons we know that a kohen gadol has to be married. The ad beiser, a kohen gadol needs to be married, especially he has to be, even though he, he has to be actually physically married on the day of kippur. And he's not allowed to be a, a widower, and he has to be married. Yotzah, verse 18. Then he goes out from the altar before God. The people of, and he brings forgiveness. Then he takes from the blood, the blood of the bull and the blood of the goat. He puts it on the horns of the altar, saviv around the altar. Now, the Archie says, this is not talking about the altar that's in the courtyard. This is talking about the altar that's in the holy, the altar of incense. He has to put, this is the only time the blood of a sacrifice is put in the base of Migdash is, is on Yom Kippur. Keep a love, and that brings about forgiveness. Verse 19. Then he sprinkles some blood upon it with his fingers seven times. And he brings and he brings sanctity. And he sanctifies the defilement of the children of Israel. The Rashi goes again, he brings them purity, what they did, the Kitsha, and he sanctifies it for the future. Verse 20, and he shall finish affecting atonement of the holy, the tent of meaning, and all the service of the, of the, of the altar, and he shall bring the live goat. Then he brings the live goat that he still stood aside. And he puts on the, on the live goat, the second goat with the girdle went to Azazel. He now brought that live goat to him and he is Vadalov and he confesses upon it. As they saw all the sins of the Jewish nation, as Kol all their rebellions, the Chalchatesim for all their unintentional sins. He confesses it upon the head of this goat. The Shilach Bayad, each iti Hamad body sends it to the timely man to the desert. I mean, the timely man, as she says, somebody who has been selected to do this service on that day. Verse 22. And the goat shall carry it upon itself, all the sins of the Jewish nation to a pre predestined. Place that they had, and so I'm invited the goat into the desert. Verse 23. And then the iron shall return to the tent of meeting. And he takes off the garments that he has worn. And which he came into the holy, and there he shall store them. So now she says, This is a whole Gemara. This plastic does not fit over here. And therefore, this pasuk actually is not in chronological order. You have to learn the Gemara. And this pasuk belongs further because this is the verse that tells us that Aaron needs to go back to the Holy of Holies to take out the pan that he left there with the coals and the incense. So this is what the pasuk teaches us over here, which goes before he sent away the goat to the, to the mountain. He needed to go back into the Holy of Holies to get that pan out. And that was the second time he went in to the Holy of Holies. So he went twice into the Holy of Holies. One, to put the pan and make the incense, 
I want to go back and take out the insults. And that's where he went in twice. And as we know, that was a very scary time that the Kayin Gadol went into the Holy of Holies. Raka, is spotted by might. He has to immerse his flesh in water, go to the mikvah. In the, in the, in the base of Mikdash. That's why there were mikvahs in the base of Mikdash. So the Kayin Gadol actually, you know, in, in the temple itself, there was a mikvah, a special mikvah, where the Kayin Gadol went on Yom Kippur himself to the mikvah, as he had to go five times to the mikvah. Lord, well, we ate some answers, so he lost so that he goes and puts on his regular garments, the eight garments, and he does the oila and the oila sa'am, the chipper badai, and he brings atonement to himself and to the Jewish people. So this is all, as Rashi goes through, this we learn, we shall immerse in the water and do the, don them when, they, that when he changes from the golden garments to the white, he's required to immerse himself. We mentioned that before. He moved the gold garment, which we had performed the service in the morning Talmud, subsequently changed into the white garments before the service of the day. Here we learn that when he changed from the white garments to gold garments, he also required to immerse in the mikvah. So that's in, in the holy place, sanctified the degree of holiness in the courtyard of the temple. It was on the roof of the chamber of the holy temple. It's called base Hapar, Hapar, Haparva. And all of the four immersion which were obligatory on that day, except the first immersion, which was performed in an unsan- unsanctified place, that was done before he started the whole service. He went to the mikvah, which was a mikvah near where he stayed. In his, in his personal room in the base of Middash, but the rest of the four immersions was done in the base of Middash proper. And that concludes today's Chumash of the day. We now go to the Tanya of the day. We are holding on chapter 44, uh, the fifth part of chapter 44. And al Rebbe, again, he wants to press upon us that even though we all have a love of God and a fear of God, we all need to awaken up this love and fear within our minds. And al Rebbe again, tried to impress upon us that we all should meditate and have an understanding of God each according to our capability. Even though that it's the self-understood, the understanding and spiritual concept of God is above it. Comprehension of man. Gotcha. Nevertheless, a person must strain his intellect to apprehend and to attain and to attain also the above mentioned level of avas oilo. So we explained before this avas rabba, a great love, that's love of sadikim, and al avas oilo, a love through the through the standing of the world. That's what it's called, oilam, a love of the world. It's a love of comprehension. And everybody needs to try to attain the love of comprehension. That comes from the knowledge of the greatness of God. As such, it differs from the love of my soul, and like a son, which is essential and inherited and are only revealed through, through contemplation. In order to fan the blaze of the fairy love and glowing coals and the intense fire and a flame that rises heavenwards so that not even many waters which are enemies of the love can extinguish it. No rivers can quench it. So, so that, what does that mean? Love created purely as a result of contemplation are more passionate more than love, which is essential inheritance. Even when in the, the inherent love is revealed through contemplation. So we, we need to have a love of the Abishta through our understanding. That's what he says, that's Hashem, to know God. We need to awaken a love of comprehension. It's not enough to have this in hate love. Because the love of comprehension brings about a desire. Yes, and the 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 yes, and
when there's a superiority, a superiority and an excellence, and the quality of love burning like a furious coal and intense flame. A bomb is bonus with das with which comes from the understanding and the knowledge of the greatness and transcends and the transcendence of the blessed and safe over two categories of love referred to above when they are not like a fierce coal and a blaze, because it's not according, it's just basically coming from our innate love of God. Everybody needs to learn Torah. We need to learn Torah and not just to learn Torah, just for the sake of learning that we're learning Torah. We need to learn Torah to understand Torah. Because when we learn Torah and we understand Torah, that awakens up within our mind a true aspect of love, not something that was given to me, something that I created. And it's important to us to create our own thing, you know, expression in the Gemara. A person wants to have his own, one, one measure of his own accomplishment than 10 measures of somebody else's. That's why God created a human being, that he should have an excitement in his own accomplishment, even though what he's going to accomplish on his own is will be very small than something that will be given to him. But it's much better when somebody receives, even if it's a small part, it's not going to be as much as he's going to have what's given to him, but it's his own. And that creates a desire when you, when I, when I do some work and I receive something from it, I get something from it, it has much greater power to me. It has much greater emotional attachment to it. And so too with the service of God. If we're only going to lie on, the, on what God gave us as an inheritance, it does not have the same effect as if I get something from new through my intellect, even though what I get from new is very small. That will create a love and a desire to it because it's my accomplishment. It's my avoider. It's something I acquired myself, not through the patriarchs and the matriarchs, not through anybody else, but myself. And that's the power of learning. To learn, to contemplate myself and create an ava to God through my own content. I explained before the superiority of the excellence of gold over silver. And Kabbalah explained that gold comes through work. Silver is much easier to attain. Gold comes through work. And therefore, gold is more precious. And a little bit of gold is worth more than a lot of silver. So too, a little bit of my service is called gold. And that is more precious than silver. Because it's through my avoid, and it's important to do this. Besides this, besides that this is the whole of man and his his tachlis, his, his, his whole purpose in the creation, resent the tray, fancy French words over here. Lemandas has called avaya, the card to fetters, that he may know the glory of God in the majesty of his splendor, of his greatness. Ish. Ish, each man, each man according to his capability. That's what the Abish to want, that the God wanted. That every person should do it according to his capability. Not somebody else's capability, but his own capability. Because then it's his. It's not somebody else's. It's not something that was given to somebody else, even from the patriarchs or Moshe Rabbeinu. It's mine. We say every day in our davening, God should give us a chayla v'seich al-keinu b'seidu secha. Give me a part. I, want, I don't want somebody else's part. I want my own part. I want you to give me the capability through my intellect to have my own part in the Torah. Mr. Kosovo in the Mahem has brought out in Kabbalah, begin the Stadale Kenoida in order that they may know him and so forth. What does that mean? Thus, does there's an equal quality and purpose in contemplation that leads to love itself. Contemplating of God's greatness is, is, is exercised to a much greater degree in, love, in the love that is created from contemplation than it is found in love and many revealed through contemplation. 
That's great that we're revealing something to contemplation. No, create something new. In the, in, in the case of the two aforementioned kinds of love, which comes that we're, we're, some, we're revealing something that we have. In order to marry the real love of my soul, by contemplation of God is true source of life, or the revealed love like a son, by contemplation that God is our true father, one meditation needs to be not to be exceedingly profound. A much deeper understanding, a more profound mode of meditation is that in order to create a love of God based solely on intellect. As a result, fine intention that they may know him, that's what we're going back to the Zohar, begin to stimulate, that they may know him, that created beings come to know godliness is realized to a much greater extent through holy contemplative love. This is an additional reason as why the kinds of love inherited in the patriarch does not suffice. And it's necessary to exert oneself to attain a love of God that stems from contemplating of his greatness to create a new love expression of Trishavasa, new waters. New waters, not something that is given to me, but new waters. And that's what the Altadev is begging us to do. That not only we should rely on revealing our love, but we should find new whispers. And that keeps a marriage alive. Not we live on the past, but we create new reasons why we love each other. And the Abishta wants that. God wants that true, or else it becomes stale. That completes the Tanya of the day. Today, the Tilim of the day. Today is the sixth day of the month, which is chapter 35. 238, 35 to 38, and you would have done the Hitas of the day. Wish you a great day. I'll see you. Everybody's invited later at 10 a.m. We're going to continue. Shad Yichud Be'emuna, the portrait of oneness, unity, and faith of the second part.